Hi, my name is Anita Lowe. I'm the chef and owner of Anissa Restaurant in the West Village of New York City. Um, I've had it since 2000, so it's almost 16 years. Um, it's a small, upscale, contemporary American restaurant. I bring in influences from all over the world, uh, but I'm French trained originally. Um, yeah, and I have a multicultural identity, so. Well, um, my father was from Shanghai, but he died when I was very, very young. So I grew up with my stepfather, who um, was Anglo-Saxon American. Um, and my mother was from uh, Malaysia, but Chinese Malaysian. But Malaysia is sort of a crossroads of Asia. There's Indian influence in there and Malay influence, et cetera. Um, and both of them worked, so I was brought up by m many different nannies. Um, uh, the one that stayed with us the longest was Hungarian. Um, we had several African American nannies, and I grew up with all that cuisine. You know, and um, my nanny's best friend was Mexican. Um, and w then we traveled a lot, so um, you know, anywhere we went, and, and like weird places. Like <laughs> you know, when I was little, I think they took us to. Iran and you know, China before Nixon had been there, and um, I don't know Sweden and all different places. So you know, we always you know my mom worked. You know, she was a doctor, so she worked really, really long hours, and she would go in early, and you know, she would work like you know twelve, fifteen hours a day, come come back and put up you know and put lots of dishes on the table for us to eat. So it was just, it, you know, and it was just really, really important. We would um, talk about what we were going to eat for lunch at breakfast and, you know, dinner at lunch and et cetera. So. Yeah, steamer clams are are sort of like the madeleine for me, the Proust madeleine for me. It's um, one of those things I grew up uh, eating, and it was sort of a special occasion. We, my parents used to take us to Cape Cod. Um, they used to rent a house in Chatham every year. Um, which is on the elbow, um, and um, we would dig for steamer clams. It was just a really wonderful experience for a kid. We, you know, you'd take a little ring, and they they were very easy to dig up, and um, I don't know, there's something very primal about it. Um, then we would take them home, and we would let them, um, we would put them in clean seawater and let them spit. Uh, we put we would put like um, cornmeal in. Which I think is actually like a, a old wives' tale. I don't think it actually helps them spit. Um, they back then the understanding was that they would spit the sand and take in the cornmeal. But um, I think if you just put them in water, it's fine. And they'll, they'll eventually spit their sand. So you you have to do that overnight. And then the next day we would um, my mother would steam them, um, and then we would have a clam bake. You know, we'd just have a pile, you know, just big pile of them, and we'd peel them and dip them in um, the 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 broth to rinse any excess stand, sand that they haven't spit yet, and then dip them in butter and eat them. It was just so delicious. Um, and we stopped going to Cape Cod when I was about seven or something like that. We went several summers. Um, and then there was a big dry period, because I, I grew up in Michigan, we didn't have steamer clams there. So um, I didn't have any for a very, very long time. And finally, um, I went to, um, I got sent away to, to boarding school. You know, I didn't come from one of those families where all the kids go to boarding school, but I went to boarding school in Massachusetts, in, in Conquer. Um, and it was sort of a scary transition. Um, but when I got there, the um, the first thing that they did for us as a welcome, they g gave us this big clam bake, you know, because it's New England, and I had the steamer clams, and I was, you know, and I really just felt like I had come home, um, and I loved high school. High school was great. Um, on some level, it saved my life. Uh, and then when I um, later, I also stopped eating steamer clams that. Much I came to New York for 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 college, and or just I, I just didn't see there weren't steamer clams in the in the fish stores back then, um, or as far as I remember there weren't any up by Columbia where I went to school, and um, in uh, I think in the early um, in 
in early 2K, I had bought a house out on Long Island, and we had discovered a, a, a bed, a clam bed, steamer clams, and we started digging for them again. And I, it was just, it was just like a really profound moment for me. I really felt like I had come home. I felt like I had gotten the right house. So, the the steamer clam is is just is is, is just really symbolic for me. Um, my niece came in for dinner. My little niece. Uh, my sister has two kids. Um, they they grew up they they grew up in Hong Kong. Um, but one of the first things I ever cooked for her when she was a baby was a little um, thing of corn with steamer clams and some lobster in it and butter. And, um, and she loved it. She was just like, <laughs> uh, but I'd like to, you know, I'd like to think that I was passing on a tradition and sort of a sense of place and, and, and caring.